In the previous video I completed assembling the X, Y and Z axis of the lead screw CNC machine and in this video I will attach and wire the stepper motors, fit a sub wasteboard and correctly wire and program a variable frequency drive to power the 1.5 kilowatt water cooled spindle. If for any reason you want to skip to a particular stage of the build the time codes will be in the description. So the stepper motors were kindly provided by a company called OMC Stepper Online for free and in fairness I was considering buying them as they seem quite reasonably priced. I have however never used them before but they do have a warehouse here in the UK so I could have ordered some which would not have had any import charges. They provided me with NEMA 23s which were only a little more powerful than the ones I originally got with the now heavily modified x carb I still don't want to dismantle that machine as I get the occasional job which I run on it and I can run these similar motors on my current controller so I can check they work. The first thing I need to do is tap the wooden plates with the same thread as the bolts I will be securing the steppers with. I checked that the thread held and measured the gap. I then began making the aluminium spacers which the motors will stand on. To do this I cut them out on my table saw sledge, although a mitre block and hacksaw would also suffice. After filing away any burrs I began assembling the four motors. The spacers are 32mm long and there will be four held between each stepper and its plates. All the machine screws tightened better than expected and the only decision I had to make at this point was which direction to point the stepper cables so they would navigate towards drag chains which I've yet to purchase. These actually feel surprisingly sturdy and could easily hold larger motors. I tightened the motor coupler and checked that everything turned. Before I move on with the wiring I will round her the mounting holes on what will be the sub wasteboard. I've already glued and cut this out from a material called Medite Exterior which I then sprayed with lacquer. This is a more durable variety of MDF which keeps its shape and makes a great material for the sub wasteboard. It's normally quite expensive but I happen to find a few pieces. You can however use normal MDF for the sub wasteboard which you can seal with MDF sealer. Okay, that was quite scary because the bit is so long and as it was plunging to make the through holes it just wasn't getting rid of the waste material the chip quick enough so I could see a kind of burst of MDF dust coming out every so often every three or four plunges um, anyway that worked now I need to just put this on the machine now I'm going to change the position of the gantry so it's facing the same direction as where the stepper motors are. Um, so what I'm going to do is undo these two plates here and slide the gantry out, flip it around and install the sub wasteboard. This should make accessing for any reason the stepper motors a lot easier. I'm just using a cable tie to push the nut under the hole. I also took some measurements for what will be the sacrificial wasteboard, which is 350 by 350 millimeters. Not a bad size for this machine's footprint, which is around 700 by 500 millimeters. <laughs> 
I'm now returning to the stepper motors and wiring 4 pin JST connectors to the wires running from the motors. These will allow me to assemble the machine a little more easily but also give me the option to dismantle everything when I need. I wired the female end to the stepper motors and the male end to the shielded or screened stepper motor wires. This process is fiddly to say the least. I held the brass terminals in the jaw of the crimps pushing the appropriate wire in before tightening the crimping pliers. The brass terminals have a catch which locks into the connector. I found pulling the pin with a long nose pliers helped. I also used heat shrink to cover any exposed wires, neaten up the wiring work and stiffen the connection. I managed to get some shielded stepper motor wire. I bought quite a bit because this isn't going to be the only CNC machine I make. And I'm going to wire up the motors now. I don't have the drag chain so I'm going to have to imagine that in place so I don't make the wires too short. Um, I also noticed something else which is the difference between the wire that I have and what I was sent with the original X-Carve and mine is, even though technically this is was the same specification, it's a lot more beefier and the reason is, is this is only shielded with foil while this has a braid and foil. Uh, the braid has to be earthed and I'm not sure if I'm going to really be able to do this on the current um, controller that I have because I'm using four pin terminals but really I need a five pin terminal which I can then also connect the nerf to. In any case I'm going to wire these up um, and turn this machine on Always take pictures of what you do, it's very easy to forget. This is the left stepper motor, this is the right one over here. This is going to run through the aluminium extrusion into a block. So while I'm wiring everything up, I'm checking the stepper motors by putting the black and green wire together in this case and then trying to turn the motor. You can hear a kind of clicking noise. When I pull them apart, you don't hear it. And then I do it with the white and red wires. In this case, I've done something wrong. I can't get any resistance. So I'm going to have to check my wiring. I think I can see the problem ready. The white wires come out. There are some specifics to the wiring and I'm not going to lie, it took me to the very last crimp to feel like I might have learned how to do it correctly. I'm going to come back to the wiring as I've actually placed the red and white ones incorrectly in the terminal block in this clip. In any case, you'll need to use a voltmeter and the method I mentioned earlier to check whether you have done everything correctly. If you have and can connect the motors to the controller, this should happen. Everything moves but the X and Y axis are quiet while the Z is rather loud. I'm not sure once I fill the spindle with cooling liquid whether this will help dampen the noise. I could also spray some expandable foam into the extrusion ends. Anyway, that's something to discuss in the comment section. If you want to know more about the controller I'm using, the relevant links will be in the information card. I'm now going to explain how I wired the VFD and program it to power the spindle. The full story is a little complicated as I received these items from two different companies which I had decided would 
unwillingly collaborate. I took advantage of a lot of misinformation until it backfired, making this stage of the project last a little too long. So I may end up making a follow-up video, but for the meantime I'll try to keep this short. This VFD is manufactured by a company called NF Lixin, and there is very little secondary information about the product compared to, say, the Huan Yang VFD. I received mine which, upon examining the instructions, noticed the wiring diagram didn't correspond with the VFD I had asked for. I refused to use it because I could not find an earth terminal. I highlighted this with pictures and they agreed that there was a mistake. So they sent me another VFD, this time with a sticker containing what seemed like the correct wiring. It has an earth. But when I went to turn it on, this happened. I looked at the instructions a little more closely, in case I had misunderstood something, and noticed a breakdown of what different parts of the model number meant. I came to the conclusion that both VFDs should take a 220 volt power supply and run the 1.5 kilowatt spindle. Whoever had designed this complicated piece of electronics wasn't stupid, but maybe the people selling it didn't know too much. Maybe some grumpy technician swapped the sticker on the second VFD after getting a bollocking for something they had not done wrong. So yeah, this is definitely the single phase terminals. I took the wiring label off one of the VFDs and found two screw terminals with earth symbols next to them. This information wasn't on the instructions, but when I checked them with a voltmeter, they seemed to be connected. So at least I could connect the earth wire of the spindle to the earth of the main power supply. I rewired the first VFD and it surprisingly turned on. Then the second one, and that also turned on as well. So now I have two variable frequency drives. I can now wire the VDF to the GDZ 80 1.5 kilowatt water cooled spindle. I am shielding the cable with tin copper braid, which I also wire to the earth. I could have used the same wires I had done with the steppers but I had already bought some 4 core stuff which needed shielding and the external braid looks quite cool. Anyway back to programming the VFD. This was a day of trial and error. I tried to set the VFD to the parameters of the spindle using an auto-tune feature but when I did this it seemed to cap the spindle at 300 hertz. I tried to respond to the error messages by changing some settings but those seem now locked. It took me a while to stumble onto the factory reset procedure and after that I decided to change the parameters manually, going from the lowest possible settings upwards when I was unsure. Like I mentioned earlier there is very little information or documentation about this particular VFD apart from what was in the manual. In the end I watched some alternative VFD videos documenting the parameters which seemed important and changing the equivalent on my own. I again hit the same problem as before, capping at 300 Hz, which would cut power to the spindle. So I began looking at other parameters and found the maximum carry away frequency, turning point of carry away frequency, and I set this from 2 to 5 kHz, and that seemed to do the trick. I can now turn on the spindle and set the speed using the potentiometer. Anyway, I hope that video wasn't too long or confusing. I had missed some detail out, but tried to highlight methods or elements which might save you time if you are in a similar build situation. I should get my friend who is fluent in Mandarin to help me draft a letter directly to the company who manufacture these drives and see if they can recommend the correct setting for the particular spindle I am using. While I'm happy with the stepper motors, and I'll provide a link to those in the description, I would suggest getting a VFD spindle bundle, or just using a normal woodworking router if you are considering making your own CNC machine. Anyway, two VFDs was a win for me against cheap marketing. 
In the next video I will wire the water cooling system for the spindle and connect drag chains where appropriate. As always don't forget to sacrifice a thumb to the algorithm gods and check out the usual links now. If you want to support this channel you can become a patron and help towards goals of fortnightly haircuts and building other CNC machines.